hi everybody. It's September 8, 2018. It is 1218 AM on the East Coast. This is my Delta Fire update. Northern California's Delta Fire jumps above treetops. MSN.com January 10, January 10, 2018. Alright, so I did a filtered search the past hour trying to get the most recent updates on this fire and this is what appeared Delta fire still burning strong KOBI TV 42 minutes ago KOBI 40 minutes ago Delta fire closes parts of I-5 Northern California's Delta fire jumps above treetops January 10 2018. Google. I clicked on it. There's no article there. Clearly, I think there was an article, but they took it off their site, but Google didn't take it off theirs. Very bizarre. January 10, 2018. Well, oh, what do you make of life these days? All right. Um, not going to play these videos. I will link to them. Yeah, it's still burning out of control. Zero percent contained. But boy, well, I the last video that I posted was last night. It was 16,000 acres, which had tripled in size in 24 hours because the first video I did, it was 5,000, I think, the first video. But it was 5,000 and then in less than 24 hours it got to 16,000 and now it is well it's doubled in less than 24 hours 31,325 acres this was updated 41 minutes ago wildfire delta fire this is the incident information system not too much else has changed except for this exploding fire taking out more and more acres. Um, last night I posted and some of the information was that it was two miles away from Dunsmuir and that had recently been updated because it was 15 miles away from Dunsmuir. Then it was two miles. But Dunsmuir still is under an evacuation warning, though the warning says be ready to leave at any time. All right, two miles away when it was at 16,000 uh, 16, acres. So now it's 31,000, doubled in size. Where did this fire go? I don't know. Did it take a sharp right or a sharp left? and then go north? I don't know, around Dunsmuir? All right. Um, mandatory evacuations for residents along the Interstate 5 corridor from exit 707 at Volmeers north to exit 714 at Gibson. Uh, the evacuation warnings, that it's now three counties uh, and yes, there were three fires that started at the same time. They merged and they call it the Delta Fire and they're still saying that it may merge with the Hers Fire which is closer to Redding. Uh, the I-5 is going to remain closed throughout the weekend and this is causing an awful lot of disruption for truckers because this was the main route. It's the main route from Mexico to Canada through the United States. So when you close off 47 miles of I-5 in this area, well, the alternative, the alternate routes are way, taking these truckers way out, like 100 miles. And when you're driving a truck, you know, that's not just a uh, a few hours. That's like six hour delay. So 
What else do I have? Still burning out of control in the rural area. Um, let's see, scattered homes and buildings in three counties were issued evacuation orders in and around Shasta Trinity National Forest area. Flames shot up 300 feet. 280 homes are threatened. Though the blaze is not burning near any large towns, well, what, what, how do you define large? Dunsmuir, 1,500. Patients ran thin at Pilot Travel Center in the town of Weed, near the northern end of the closure, with facilities at the truck stop stretched to the limit and parked big rigs lining nearby roads. It's been ridiculously congested. It's been frantic. A lot of the truckers are upset. They're just stuck. They can't get through, and they're sick of waiting around. The reason why I highlighted that was you have a disaster happening in a, a confined area that is not densely populated, but it is the main route that truckers take, and they've got their shipments, but they're losing patience, they're sick of waiting around, they're upset. Um, think about a disaster that's bigger. You know, Americans really do not have much patience. We have, we have lived a rather privileged life. You know, as we have started, you know, wars in other countries, dropped bombs on, you know, so many. Overseas, we fought them over there so we didn't have to fight them over here so we could just continue to live our life uninterrupted. Well, guess what? Life for Americans. Uninterrupted is those in that class, that class is getting smaller and smaller. Think about these fires. Think about the flash floods all over the country. Life is being disrupted for an awful lot of people. And that disruption, well, if we see this on a larger scale, you're going to see an awful lot of Americans unable to cope. Unable to cope. And it does take an awful lot of patience to, well, those who are the victims. And I'm not talking about the truckers who have to sit at the pilot center watching TV. Um, I'm talking about the victims. The, the, the people who have lost their homes, whether it's due to flooding or fire, it's hard enough to accept that everything that you own is gone. The grief of that is like so shattering. I mean, it's like it throws you into a cognitive dissonance and, and a Okay, life has changed, but then when you think about everything that follows. So I hear people saying in videos that people are building, rebuilding, that they're getting their insurance money. They're not. They're fighting with insurance companies to get what they deserve. Most are not getting um, enough to build, to rebuild, and a lot of Americans Oh, well, you want to believe that the economy is doing great and everybody is back at work. And No, that's not true. The economy is not doing great. And a lot of Americans, you know, they're one medical crisis away from bankruptcy. Many don't even have the savings to, to deal with you know, an emergency that costs $500 or $1,000. So we're looking at an awful lot of people who are really, their lives disrupted for a very, very long time. And many don't recover, do not recover. So in reading this, California takes financial wallop from unrelenting fires. Wow. So this is the Delta fire. 
Okay, looks similar to a lot of the other fires, doesn't it? Oh, in fact, let me just show you this. Um, oh, AP, look at this. So, the first part of the video, do you see what we refer to as an anomaly? Do you see what stands out in this picture? I think you do. Right to the left, in the middle, blue, plastic, uh, what are those things called? Drums. Um, untouched. Hmm. But this might have been an outbuilding or something, I don't know. But there it is, sitting right next to all of the burned out heap, untouched. Anomalies are strange occurrences or abnormal occurrences. Uh, they're rare. So, John Knox had posted a video talking about how th this word anomaly, we need to get rid of it. This is the new normal. Our life is, has really changed, radically different, and these anomalies well, they're not anomalies anymore. The anomalous characteristics of all of these fires over the years, whether it's Gatlinburg, Tennessee, uh, the fires in Greece, the fires in Canada, Fort McMurray, a lot of the fires, uh, last year's fires, Santa Rosa, uh, what was it, the Thomas fire, uh, this fire, uh, the Car fire, the Mendocino complex fire, they all have these anomalous characteristics which show that these are not normal fires. But when you have anomalies happening all the time, they're not anomalies anymore. Yeah, untouched. And I want to get back to this truck that I showed yesterday. Look at this. Uh, mental boost. Thanks for you know, just posting these videos. But, all right. So, we heard that people left their cars, left their trucks, or truckers were uh, detaching, you know, their the truck, the front end from the load that they were carrying. That's a load that was just left. But that's untouched. And as you can see, well, so their trees are untouched, right? Okay, but we heard dry, 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 dry. In fact, what was it in this video? Is it in this video or is it in another video? This guy, he's talking about how, oh yeah, here, listen. Rain is a tinder box. You can hear those flames eating through this bone dry brush. This is perfect fuel for this fire. This is Cal Fire says it's running out of money after a Yeah, it is running out of money. Okay. So dry. It's perfect for these fires. Well, um considering how dry everything is. And well, when you see this truck, bam, all of the trees are fine. Doesn't look like the trees on this side were too fine. But what? That th there's not high winds. Was it an ember that hit this truck and incinerated the truck? So this truck is incinerated but this trailer up here is fine and well it seems a little odd did the trucker go through and see this truck on fire and decided to dump his load I don't know but this is not normal, okay? And the trees on that side are absolutely fine. These trees seem um, singed. This truck got incinerated. 
and it's still burning. Still burning. Well, I guess somebody would say that's the gasoline. Uh, this, you know, the, the logs got incinerate, uh, got singed, but uh, the truck is fine. I mean, the truck got incinerated. I'm sorry. All right. Yeah, the 300 foot. Oh, my God. You know, since we can't get through to our fellow Americans, this will continue to happen. It will continue to happen. Are these just cars that got incinerated? And then this truck. But this trailer was fine. All right. Um, untouched. So we now have um, the California Insurance Commissioner saying that more than 10,000 claims so far this year, just for the fires, were filed, totaling $845 million. Just for the two fires, the Mendocino Complex and the Car Fire. 8,800 homes and 329 businesses destroyed or damaged. 8,800 homes. So you are looking at an awful lot of people still who are struggling. And they say the worst is yet to come. Yeah, Commissioner David Jones warned at a San Francisco news conference that typically the fires are more destructive after September 1. We can expect more fires. Californians, please be ready. Everybody should be ready. Everything that you can fit in your car or vehicles that is important to you, it should be in your garage or right at your front door, ready, you know, for you to grab on a moment's notice. This fire started at like 1.30 in the afternoon. Most of these fires have been starting after midnight. And, well, your fire agencies only have $11 million left. They have gone through an awful lot, and they need another $234 million. And don't be surprised if your state legislature or your governor says, we just don't have it. That will make the fires really grow out of control. And remember, your moonbeam governor last year said the Thomas Fire, that it would continue until Christmas, and it continued until after New Year's. New Year's. So, uh, if they don't have the money to fight the fires, what is going to happen? So they've closed I-5 for the entire weekend. All right, that's the, the best I can do in terms of giving you an update. 0% um, contained. It's doubled in size. The Marine Corps Mountain Warfare Training Center was evacuated. Campgrounds and other areas were evacuated. Ranchers were told to prepare to move livestock out of the area in Humboldt and, I don't know, Toyabe National Forest. I'm sorry. Uh, I know that I screwed that up. Livestock, how much livestock is in that area? What about horses? What about all of the wildlife? Be prepared, guys. And if you didn't know this all, just you can uh, go to the Shasta County Sheriff's Office. All three counties have Sheriff Office Facebook pages. So you can find out information by clicking on, and I'll link below to everything, the Siskiyou County, I don't know how to pronounce that either. Um, so if you 
need to learn anything quick, I guess click on their Facebook pages. The American Red Cross has opened an evacuation center at Mercy Oaks in Reading. Wow. Huh. Okay. Last night you had one evacuation open, uh, a, uh, an evacuation center opened in Shasta County for the Delta Fire. Now there's three, well, four, at the American Red Cross that opened one in Reading. Okay, I guess the hearse and the Delta Fire are going to merge. I say that with that inflection at the end, which should tell you that that's a question mark. But the American Red Cross, it's always there to help the needy. All right. I'll link below to everything. Stay safe, everybody, and have a good weekend.